Hello. Okay, so I'm never quite sure when I'm actually starting here. All right, so now I know I'm live. Um, today we're going to talk about weighted vests. This is uh, this is another question that comes up really often, and so I thought it would be useful to have something that we could go back to regularly and easily send you off on when you're looking for information about weighted vests. So full transparency, I used to say, yes, weighted vests are amazing for people with osteoporosis. We should all use them. And I have pulled back from that perspective um, on you know thinking more deeply about it. And I've changed the way I think we should use them. So let's start with weighted vests as a, a thing for people who don't have osteoporosis. Because sometimes we think, you know, we see advertising about them or we see other people using them. Um, they kind of started out being used as a major workout tool. They were used for, you know, training for military people who need to be able to carry heavy backpacks and they kind of then evolved into people who do like tough mudder races and people who want to add more effort and more cardio to their workout. So that's a fitness use for a weighted vest. And that's a separate category than, than for us, in a way, um, because we have some limitations that we want to think about. So for some people, a weighted vest is a great strategy. If you're going to use a weighted vest, you want one that ha allows you to increase or decrease the amount of weight that you're using. Um, and you want it to be able to be evenly distributed, back to front, side to side, so that your weight is level and even and even <coughs> and it's not going to be inclined to tip you in any particular direction um, so so that's one thing is kind of you want to make sure that the quality of the vest that you're using is good you want it to be comfortable you want it to sit smoothly on your body um, so that it's not creating any any downsides for you um, who should wear a weighted vest or who could wear a weighted vest? Anybody who is really confident that they are upright and strong um, and who when they put the weighted vest on it feels like a good thing. People who want to avoid weighted vests would be anybody who has a forward head posture or a forward shoulder posture because if you are wearing weight, so what we want to avoid, one of the things that we want to limit or avoid is weighted flexion, right? So bending forward when we have extra weight that's putting extra weight on the fronts of the vertebrae because that can lead us to be vulnerable to fractures in the fronts of our spines. So if you are a person, and there are many of us, who is a little bit curved forward whether it's because you have tight shoulders or because that's just been your lifelong posture or whatever it is, if you then add a weighted vest, you've got extra weight now pulling down even more than your head, neck and shoulders, your own body weight on the fronts of your vertebrae. And so we're not loving that. We're not loving that extra weight. Um, anybody who's had a, an, has an existing compression fracture in their spine particularly their upper spine, again, same reason, right? We don't want extra weight pulling forward on what are already shown to be vulnerable vertebrae in your spine because fractures are absolutely zero fun. Anybody who has existing back pain, wearing a weighted vest is, is possibly going to increase back pain, um, especially if we don't know what your back pain is related to. And so, you know, adding extra load before you've sorted out the back pain, probably not an ideal uh, situation. And so, so yeah, weighted vests can be great. And if you have one of those situations, so forward head posture, forward shoulder posture, kind of a curved forward position, uh, back pain, whether it's upper, mid, or lower, or even neck pain, we don't want to be adding extra weight to that. We want to be figuring out ways for you to move that are going to mitigate those circumstances, and a weight vest is not likely to do that. Um, 
If you have arthritis or if you have spondylolisthesis, if you have some other condition, then you would probably want to consult with uh, a hands-on person, a physiotherapist, or somebody who's going to give you some really good solid indication as to whether a weight vest is a good call for you or not. Um, and then for people who are feeling good and feeling strong and are accustomed to weight, then yes, absolutely, weight vest can be very helpful. However, I think a lot of us feel like the best way to use a weight vest is to put it on when we're going for a long walk. And if you do, that's going to be great for your cardio, it's going to be great for your strength and endurance, um, it can make your walk more challenging or your run or your jog or your whatever it is that you're doing, but after the first little while it's not having a lot of effect on your bone density. Because remember we know that bone cells adapt really quickly to the stimulation that they're experiencing. So we know that walking and jogging and running you know, yes, they provide impact, but after the first few minutes, there's less and less bone specific benefit. And so if you're wearing a weighted vest while you're, while you're walking or jogging, it's, it, its effectiveness also is gonna die off in the first few minutes. So I think it's more effective if you want to use a weighted vest to use it while you're doing your exercises. Right? Use it while you're doing squats, use it while you're doing lunges, use it while you're doing exercises in the short term while we're still in this building strength, pulling on the bones, giving them that stimulation, and then you're doing something else, right? So you do your, you know, I was doing this morning, I was doing about a seven minute lower body strength training um, set followed by a few minutes of rest where I did some I did some shoulder mobility work and then another seven minute lower body set that squats and lunges and heel raises and split squats um, and then another little break so if you're wearing a weighted vest while you're doing that stuff then you might be getting a different kind of stimulation to the bones in that shorter term building strength strength pulling on the bones activity rather than impact because we know that the impact wears off more quickly. So the benefit of the weight vest is less bone specific when you're doing more of an endurance activity, right? Going for a long walk. Um, I'm trying to think of other questions that I've seen about weighted vests and none are coming to mind. And this is clearly, a, everybody is busy today. Um, there is a couple of you here live. Um, if, you're he if you are here live, do you have any questions about weighted vests for you specifically? Because if you're here, you may as well like pick my brain about your own particular and individual situation. And it takes a moment for my system to process comments. So if anybody has a comment, I will just say that um, the alternative to a weight vest for somebody who has um, who has that forward posture but still wants to get a little extra load would be a weight belt. And that you're wearing around your waist. It's not gonna have any effect in terms of bone density on your upper spine, right? On your thoracic spine, on your mid, mid and, and lumbar spine because the, the, the extra weight is coming down across your pelvis and your legs. But it can be very helpful in terms of your pelvis and your total hip and your femoral neck and your thigh bone, right? Because the weight is now traveling from the belt down through your legs and your hips. So that could be a helpful alternative. And in the same way that you would increase weight very gradually with a weight vest, you would do the same thing with a weight belt. You wanna make sure the weight is evenly distributed and that you're only increasing by small amounts of weight. Um, and you know it's time to increase the weight when you know you you feel strong and confident and competent throughout your workout activity whatever it is that you're doing again i would do i would use a weight belt for slower or it's not slower but like shorter activities like like a, a lower body workout or an upper body workout um rather than a than wearing it for a long walk then the other thing that people bring up sometimes is well what about wrist and ankle weights so again, if you wanna wear wrist and ankle weights and they feel good and you feel strong and it doesn't bother any part of your body, that's great. 
They are going to increase your workout, they're going to increase your cardio, they're going to increase your endurance, they're not going to have a lot of effect on your bone density. The wrist weights might have a little bit of effect on your um, wrist and forearm density, but you have to remember that the way we're getting that increase in bone density or that maintenance of bone density, the increase in bone cell activity, is either by squishing the bone cells or pulling on the bone cells with strong muscles. And so if the weight is at the end of your wrists or is at the end of your legs, it's not having that compressive um, action and it's, it's gonna be, if you're on your legs, they're mostly gonna be strengthening your hip flexors. They're not gonna do so much in terms of your, uh, your glutes and hamstrings and pulling on the backs of your legs to create that density and that kind of target um, that we want around the femoral neck. So short form for those of you who are just joining in would be uh, weight vests in sh for short amounts of time preferably when you're doing a workout rather than when you're on a long walk, unless your goal is overall fitness and endurance, in which case absolutely wear it for a walk, um, assuming that it's comfortable and that you don't have any um, physical positioning and postural issues that are gonna mean that the weight vest is weighing down on your shoulders and pulling forward onto the front of your spine. Um, avoiding if you have back pain is probably not the right choice. And uh, maybe going for a weight belt if you really feel like it's a useful, uh, gonna be a useful contributor to your workout, um, if you do have that forward, or if you've had a com upper body compression fracture. Alrighty, this is a little quick in and out 10 minute one today, and I will slide this up into the replay guides for anybody who is looking for it later. If you're watching later and you have questions, of course, put them into the comments below and I will come back and answer uh, at some point later today. Bye. Oh good, Laura, I'm glad you were here. I'm glad that's helpful and you're very, very welcome. See you later.